Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. My name is Steve Vollmer. We operate Vollmer's Harness and Saddle Shop, Nisswa, Minnesota. And we order our leather according to how we're going to use it. And we can order it the thickness we want. Now this is a, a very he heavy piece of a russet harness leather. This is a, a piece of rawhide that has not been tanned. And each, each uh, different leather has a different purpose, a different way we use it. First, we make sure the customer has a, a measuring chart. And they take the measurements of their horse or their team and then we put those measurements into the specifications of the harness and then when we get all those measurements down then we start cutting the leather. The customer can specify if they want a black harness or a russet harness, if they want solid uh, brass hardware or perhaps they want stainless steel hardware. Ornaments, we have spotting machines uh, that will spot the harness and they can either decide if they want a spotted harness or a plain harness. That's all part of uh, designing what they, what they want. We make, we make the harness uh, that they want. All of our leather that we use is cowhide. It uh, all depends on how it's tanned as to the, how it's used in a harness or in a saddle for that matter. We generally use heavy black drum dyed harness leather which comes to us uh, dyed black on, uh, on both sides, d a drum dyed, and we just start cutting it from the side of leather. We first square it and get a straight edge, and then this is a uh, draw gauge. We can cut any width strap we want with this uh, gauge. This is a creaser. We run it through this uh, creaser and this rolls the edge of your leather and puts a uh, uh, crease on each, each side. It kind of dresses it up a little bit. This is a clicker die. After cutting all the straps, we cut all of these dies. We have a lot of various shapes for dies. This stamps out. The, the shape that we need, uh, and we can cut a lot of various uh, different kinds of shapes that all uh, fit into the harness, saves a lot of time. These two machines here are uh, spotting machines, and what they do is put the decorative spots onto harness or, or sleigh bells. You just put your leather in, and uh, with the foot feed, uh, apply the, uh, the spots, they clinch, in the back and make a nice decorative harness. They make these spots now in stainless steel hardware so they, they'll last a long time, won't tarnish, and uh, really decorate up a harness uh, real nice. This is our uh, main sewing machine here. This is a Randall Union Lock Stitch machine and they still make the machine. All the uh, NFL footballs are sewed on this machine. It's called a, a, a lock stitch. Your awl comes down, puts the hole through your leather. We can sew up to three quarters of an inch in thickness. Your needle comes up, catches the thread, and connects with the bobbin, locks it underneath, and you have a lock, a lock stitch. Should that stitch be cut for any reason, it will hold on either side because it's locked, it's locked in place. This is fairly typical of, of the harness that we manufacture in our, in our little shop here. This is a single draft uh, driving harness used on a buggy or a, a cart or a vis-a-vis -vis for pleasure driving. It's stainless steel leather single driving harness. Harnesses really haven't changed that much over history. They are very functional uh, piece of, of equipment. 
but it's fun when a person has a special request or a, a special little something they, they want in a harness. It's fun to try and expand your creation a little bit and make something a little different. I would say on average it takes uh, between 40 and uh, 60 hours to uh, make a harness, depending on how elaborate it is. I like to study the Old West. This country was settled on the backs of horses with teams and from the work uh, horses to pioneers crossing the country. I like reading and studying about that. It's a fascinating uh, uh, part of the history of this country was how this was settled and we uh, take part in wagon trains out in South Dakota and have crossed the prairie with wagon trains. It's an amazing thing what our settlers did to settle this country heading out west with a team of horses and a wagon and headed for Oregon or California or wherever they were going. And they had to find water and, and graze for their horses and teams. And it's an amazing part of our history that I hope we never lose. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4, 2008.